You're listening to Breakfast with Pablo. Former world number one David Hall is regarded as one of the greatest wheelchair players in tennis, winning a staggering nine Australian Opens, eight US Opens, seven British Opens, and we do have David on the phone today. David, good morning. Morning, Pablo. How are you? Very good. Now, you're regarded one, as one of the uh, most accomplished wheelchair tennis players in history. Uh, last week, you took your place alongside the greats in the game being inducted into the Australian Tennis Hall of Fame. Uh, first up, congratulations. I appreciate that. Yeah, th- thanks very much. It was, uh, it was very special. Uh, it's kind of it's hard to describe it, to be honest. You know, it's something that you never really think might happen and then when uh, Tennis Australia informed me that they were going to induct me uh, during the Australian Open, I think I was just I was in a bit of a state of shock to be honest. Uh, Amazing, amazing experience. It is. You're you're alongside names like Rod Laver, Margaret Court, Ken Roswell. I mean, you must be very, very happy with it. Yeah, I am. And to be honest, like I would never have uh, you know thought of myself to be worthy really, uh, of being in their company. Uh, I mean, you're talking about, you know, players that have, uh, I mean, Australian sporting folklore, really, in terms of tennis, you know, runs through all those players. Uh, Newt, you know, Rosewall, Court, Waver, Stolly. Uh, I mean, you know, they're just legends. And I, I'm, you know, I feel very blessed that I'm considered to be, you know, worthy enough to be uh, considered you know, part of that uh, that rich Australian history. Now, you started playing wheelchair tennis at age 19, uh, three years after losing your legs by being hit by a car. Obvi- obviously, it's quite a transition uh, going into wheelchair tennis. How, how did you deal with that at the beginning? Uh, to be honest, uh, it was difficult. Uh, I think any major event, you know, especially something such as a, you know, a pretty big injury, uh, I think there is a transition period and... Now, I think because I played tennis as a kid, you know, I kind of had that love for it in the beginning. I, I, I knew the grips and the swings. And and so, you know, after kind of going through the, you know, typical phase, you know, you kind of, you know, why me? I think there's some, you know, resentment and, and things like that. You slowly, I think, with support of family and friends, you, do, you come around, you know, eventually. And I think that's why, I mean, tennis was a bit of a savior for me, I think, in in some ways, that uh, it came along at the right time and I was just able to pour, you know, whatever negative energy I was feeling uh, through the accident, um, I was able to pour that into tennis. And I think, you know, as the months went on and it kind of turned into a year, I started traveling with tennis. I think I moved away from, from all that negative negative energy and, and kind of turned it into a positive. Now, if people have ever uh, tried it before, and I remember back at school, yeah, I've played basketball uh, my whole life, and uh, a, a couple of times we, we tried it in the wheelchair, and it's a huge, huge adjustment. And <laughs> at the beginning, it's very, very, very difficult. Um, what did you find the hardest thing uh, as as part of the game of tennis uh, to adjust to uh, while being in a wheelchair? Well, I think the funny thing was, in the beginning, I wanted to get up and run. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, which is hard to do. I've got no legs, so I think that was the biggest thing because I think your natural instinct is, mm. you know, you're in a position uh, up the other end of the court. The ball is coming, and your natural instinct is to run for the ball. Well, obviously, I couldn't do that, so you know, I had to relearn. You know, the first instinct was to push mm. the chair to the ball and then swing. But I think that's what uh, some of the guys, like we've had Newton. You know, Alicia Mollick, um, you know, those kind of guys get in the chair and they always say their first instinct is to get up and run for the ball because they've been so used to doing that you know, their whole life. Um, so I think that was the hardest thing. Once I kind of overcame that, you know, and it became an instinct to push, uh, then, you know, mobility became a lot easier. Uh, looking back at it, uh, you got inducted last week. Did you ever imagine when you first started at age 19 uh, that you would have such a successful career? Oh, definitely not. No, no. I mean, I just, you know, I was just a long-haired kid, you know, into heavy metal music, uh, just wanting to get out there and smash some balls around. Uh, <laughs> you know, it wasn't... Uh, Are you still into the he- heavy mu- heavy, uh, heavy music? <laughs> oh, mate, look, I've got, I've got a lot less hair uh, than <laughs> I've got... Uh, but I'm actually still into the music, funnily enough. I think I'll be an old rocker for a, for a few more years yet. But... Um, no, I, I, you know, I never thought it would take me very to be 
be honest, I think it, I mean, at some point, I think I was, you know, smart enough to realise that there's a lot of potential there. Uh, and I thought that the, the way wheelchair tennis was travelling, you know, in the 90s, it was really starting to gain traction, you know, get into pro tournaments. Uh, the prize money was, was rising, you know, the rankings were becoming bigger. And I think the ITF, the International Tennis Federation and Tennis Australia did a, a really good job in promoting it and, you know, turning it into a, you know, very popular sport. I mean, obviously the Paralympics in Sydney was a huge uh, boost for it as well. So all those things kind of collided in, in the 90s, and I think that, that, that really helped it. Now, you had great success uh, right through your career. You won the Paralympic Games, uh, six seasons atop uh, the world rankings. Does anything stand out the most for you uh, looking back on your career? Oh, definitely the, the Sydney Games. Uh, I think, you know, that was the one that I... I mean, I guess the thing was, you know, the U.S. Opens come around every every year. The Australian Opens come around every year. You know, you've always got a chance to to try and do well there. But I knew I'd only get one shot at this Paralympics in my home country, in my home city. You know, I was never going to get that chance again. So I think to, to win that, um, you know, and I had to deal with my own expectation, I think. You know, I think other people obviously wanted me to win and were very supportive. And but I think just my own you know, personal expectation of, of trying to do well and trying to win it. I think uh, I was pretty, you know, pretty proud of myself that I was able to kind of deal with all that and perform, you know, when I, when I needed to. And so, yeah, that was the biggest moment for me. Classic Gold, today's hits, Spirit.